This morning I was sent a tweet which someone had posted saying that our Santa's Grotto, which is currently going on in Essex, I shouldn't be allowed because violent anti-Islam people uh, should have no access to children. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's so, so much, there's just so much to say about that one, isn't there? Violent? First of all, when? When have Fulbright never been violent? And the idea that being anti-Islam should exclude you for looking after children, well, I don't know, is irony the word? Perhaps not. Uh, Islam, as we know, uh, allows children to be married, little girls, to be married to old men, so I don't think it's anti-Islam that is a threat to children. And in fact, what is so wrong with being anti-Islam? But in any case, I mean, this is the idiocy, isn't it? This is the upside down, uh, moronic, uh, left wing approach to this. And, and they're able to call us violent for absolutely no reason. We've absolutely no history of endorsing or condoning or involving ourselves in violence. Zero. And yet, casually, we are referred to as violent. And that's not the first time that I've seen that. So what's the problem here? Why are people like this? Why do they think? I mean, recently we were ambushed, as you might know, uh, when we were trying to do a Jack the Ripper walk around the East End. Now, these people actually thought we were there to scope out the mosques. I mean, this is crazy. Who do they, what do they think we are exactly? They think we're monsters. Um, and there's a reason they think we're monsters. And that reason is the media. And the media lies and lies and lies. It, like much of public life, academic life, has been completely dumbed down and watered down. So the journalism is no longer journalism. Quote unquote journalists now go on Wikipedia, go on to Hope Not Hate, copy and paste, uh, and denounce me and our party as absolute monsters with zero justification. And the only confirmation they get of our monsterhood is from Hope Not Hate, a organisation with a financial vested interest in creating hate mongers out of thin air, because that's what they've done. They create a caricature, then they set themselves up as the opponent to that awful, awful, monstrous caricature, and they must get paid for standing up to these monsters. The media is pathetic, uh, it's completely unjust, and so-called journalists, with a blink of an eye, will destroy lives, utterly destroy them. Uh, and and th no investigation. There's never any investigation. I've read. I've seen uh, 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 in in Irish magazine actually <laughs> uh, the truth about Amory Water. Who is Amory Waters or something? And I'd never heard. This was a, a you know a a, a document a document of my life without me being informed or asked a single question about it. And that's not the first time I've done interviews and read it afterwards and simply not recognised the conversation that they wrote. Uh, I've been to events, which I've seen reported afterwards, bear no resemblance to the reality that I've seen. So the, the media is utterly, utterly toxic. But when you are talking about regulation of the media, for example, you've got to tread really, really carefully because we must have freedom of speech and we must have freedom of the press. So any regulation of the press has to be entirely justified. And this takes me to the media section. If you're wondering what all this is about this morning, this takes me to the media section of our manifesto. Absolutely crucial element of our manifesto. Timely, so important. Uh, and the only reason, as I say, that you can justify regulating the press or placing anything, any demands on a free press uh, must be in the name of extending freedom of speech and in the name of extending democracy. And that is indeed what we are trying to do with this policy. So let me, as with the other videos on this, let me read it. Let me read through it uh, with some some commentary. And I'll follow this up so with a blog as well. So here's the, uh, straight from the manifesto, our media policy. Ever since US President Donald Trump declared mainstream broadcasters were peddling fake 
news, the world has become far more aware of the power of the media and its ability to manipulate public opinion for political ends. Now, let's uh, be clear about this. Journalists, not only are they lazy and dumbed down uh, and don't actually seem to understand what journalism is because they get their information from Wikipedia, uh, but they are often political activists and they are trying to push their own political side. Uh, they will manipulate the the, uh, the news, they will create caricatures, as I've said. Uh, they will take a sentence, you know, as you, you can sit down and have an entire conversation with a, pre with a journalist, uh, and they will take one sentence and build a caricature around that sentence. They're not telling the truth. And I'm not talking about little white lies. I'm talking about manufacturing, deliberately manufacturing, uh, a, a contrived quote-unquote reality which is placing people in danger. It's now uncontroversial to note that the mainstream media across the Western world demonstrates a stark and regular bias in favour of open borders, multiculturalism and woke social ideas while standing against nationalism and patriotism. Now everyone knows that's true. The, there is an inbuilt bias in the mainstream media towards the left, left-wing way of thinking. Uh, because our entire public sector, for example, our university schools, all on the left, so journalists, quote-unquote journalists, are coming out of universities absolutely stuffed to the ears with left-wing propaganda. Uh, patriotism, nationalism, is, is seen as some, you know, an evil. Uh, and it goes without saying that this is evil. And there's no justification for it. It's just matter-of-factly stated. If you have any concerns about mass migration or multiculturalism, they will denounce you as far right. And this this you know this is a, an incredible danger. Uh, a lie. It's putting people uh it, it's putting people's lives at risk. Uh, but of course they don't care about people like me and putting our lives at risk. It is also uncontroversial to note that many in politics who speak critically of open borders, multiculturalism, Islamization, man-made climate change or transgenderism can expect to have their arguments ignored by the media or for those critics to be declared far-right, fascist, racist or an otherwise hateful bigot with no right of reply and no objective justification provided for the application of the affixed label. So, uh, pretty much uh, an extension of what I've, I just said uh, before reading this paragraph, but... Um, no right of reply, and you're not. There's no justification offered either. So I'll be called a racist. Um, nothing, nothing I've said is racist uh, because I don't think that way. So they can't actually produce any evidence that I have racist views. So they will just call me it and leave it there with no justification, no reason to call me a racist, and uh, I have no right of reply. This must end. The wider public most often does not have the time to do intricate research into political issues or read the true arguments of a political candidate. Most people are busy raising their children, paying their mortgages, and as such they get their information from glancing through the mainstream media. This is unfortunately the truth. Uh, no, but people are not going to, they'll see me call far right or racist, and they're not going to go and listen to all the speeches I've delivered to understand that I've never said anything racist. Media giants understand this, they understand people don't have a great deal of time, and they manipulate headlines and indeed language itself to persuade the average voter that some politicians are good, others are bad, and can thus be ignored or written off altogether as immoral or as cranks. The effect this has on democracy should be obvious. People are voting not based upon the true position of a political candidate, but upon media spin and outright untruths. And this is probably the most unforgivable aspect of all of this, the danger it does to democracy itself. Uh, we are People are voting based on lies. They don't know who the political candidate really is, especially if that candidate has any controversial views. Uh, the press will destroy that person. The, me the public, voting public, is lied to. And the result is that we are voting for people not based on what they actually stand for, but based on what a, li a lying, yes, lying journalist uh, tells them. So in a free society and in the interest of democracy and free speech, <clears throat> the press should not be controlled. However, 
journalists should be required to justify labels they attach to political candidates. Now, when we're running in an election period, what journalists say about candidates is crucial. And this is justifiable regulation of the press because it enhances the democratic uh, debate and it extends freedom of speech by ensuring a right of reply for candidates. For example, if a newspaper labels a candidate a fascist, they should be legally required to explain the accepted definition of fascism and explain why and how the affected candidate meets that definition. Now, this refers somewhat to the manipulation of language that I mentioned. Uh, dislike of Islam, not fascism. Dislike of Islam, not racism. Uh, dislike of Islam, not far right. And dislike of Islam, not a danger to children. <laughs> Quite the opposite, I would argue. Furthermore, this is the uh, final part of the manifesto on this. Furthermore, and particularly during an election period, all candidates should be granted a right of reply by the newspaper or television programme. So here are the points. For Britain will reform defamation laws so that those affected may take legal action if a lie is told about them in the media. This cannot be prohibitively expensive as it is now. Now, there are several ways we can do that. We could extend legal aid, for example. Let's not spend taxpayers' money keeping racists, or rapists and terrorists in this country. Let's instead uh, extend legal aid to ensure that the justice of... Uh, not being defamed in the national press uh, is, is extended because you shouldn't have to be rich to be able to protect your reputation from lies in the national press. And I remember when I went to a, a solicitor about The Guardian uh, and, and a couple of others, and he told me, I hope you have uh, six figures in your back pocket. I mean, this is scandalous. I, I was ripped to shreds by those newspapers, completely lying. And there was nothing I could do because I didn't have the money. So we have got to change this. So as I say, there are several ways we can make, uh, we can invest in a cheaper tribunal service, for example. Or we can, as I say, extend legal aid. There are ways that we can make it easier and cheaper for people to have justice and not have their names smeared by the mainstream press. Two, ensure that candidates in an election are given the right of reply by the newspaper TV news program uh, and that this right of reply is of a similar length and placed in a similar section of the newspaper slash TV program as the initial piece to which the candidate is responding. Now, uh, what this that means is let me give you an example I, I, you know I, I I'm telling my own story with this but I'm not this isn't about me the individual me obviously it's about people like myself who are attacked and smeared by the media without any justification or even any attempt at justification uh, or any right of reply uh, I was called a, a neo-fascist in a headline by the Telegraph right as the UKIP leadership election was about to open um, and I had no right to reply and, and what they what ought to happen and I know we can't do this all the time but during an election period this will be crucial um, so if there's a, a, a full page article calling me a neo-fascist there should be I should have a full page article in the same place to reply it's not good enough to stick a little quote they didn't even ask me for a quote in fact but to it's not good enough to stick a little quote at the bottom of a uh, you know one one line from me uh, at the bottom of a full page calling me a neo-fascist and then a line saying she she denies being a neo-fascist not good enough you have to give me a full page as well uh, require newspapers, TV programs to fully explain the meaning of political labels such as fascist and explain how and why the candidate in question meets or doesn't meet the definition of this label. This is quite clear. You can't just call me a fascist and then leave it there. Tell the reader what a fascist is and what I have done to or, or said that declares me uh, that makes me fit that definition. Once again, uh, opposition to Islam, not fascism. Resist and oppose all attempts to shut down independent blogging, sharing or exchange of information online. The internet has provided unprecedented liberty to individuals and this must not be tampered with. Uh, there are and there are going to be attempts to shut down websites under the proviso of, of course, hate speech isn't everything that is anti-establishment will uh, is uh, and will be called hate speech so any attempts to regulate the internet um, we know that the eu would love to we know that the un probably love to as well any attempt must 
be resisted and all technology we can muster to get around these things must uh, be on the table. We cannot and will not allow them to regulate the internet. Finally, resist and oppose all attempts by social media to practice political bias. I mean, the social media bias, again, uh, we're all familiar with. Not a whole lot uh, we can do here about the two big ones, Twitter and Facebook. Uh, that's up to Donald Trump. I sincerely wish he would do something about it. Um, but we'll, we'll keep shouting, we'll keep fighting. Uh, and, you know, one thing we really do need to do is get on to alternative social media. I don't have a great deal. I'm not a big fan of social media, actually. Um, especially, you know, I, Twitter's the only one I've really gotten into. I, Facebook is still a mystery to me. But Twitter's the one I've, I've only re really gotten into. Um, and it was a toxic environment. It is a toxic place. I'm not a, not a fan. But I do realise that, unfortunately, it is hugely, hugely, hugely influential. Um, and there ought to be, once again, if you're going to regulate speech and, and, and debate, and you've got to have a justifiable reason, uh, because we must be a free speech society. And once again, uh, to extend free speech and to uh, you know expand debate, I think in that uh, you know for that justification, we uh, have every right to I think campaign for the regulation of social media. This is all about fairness, it's all about justice and, one, and what you know for Britain wants to offer the country is a fair just society. We all know, we know in our gut, we have an innate sense of what's fair and what isn't. This isn't fair. To be called a Nazi, a racist on the national press and have no right of response isn't fair and it isn't fair to turn me and others into monsters absolute uh, cartoon character evil wicked monsters that actually we are followed around the streets i can't walk around safely because of media lies we all know this isn't fair once again completely unique brilliant common sense tough but fair policy from for Britain. If it sounds like your kind of thing, do get on board. Forbritain.uk. Look us up. Check us out. Most refreshing party in this country. Read our manifesto and join us.